Bandits appoint, still appoints, deposed village heads in Sokoto State. PDP wins 10 chairmanship seats as Plateau State Independent Electoral Commission awaits seven local government areas. Nigerians lament incessant deductions bank account high charges. And on the international scene, death toll in Haiti brutal gang attack last week rises to 115. Good evening. Welcome to Trust TV News R. I am Sumaya Abubakar. And starting with security matters, the chairman of ISA local government area of Sokoto State, Sharifu Kamarawa, on Thursday told Minister of Defense Bello Matawale that some communities in eastern ISA were still under the control of bandits. Receiving the minister at the local government secretariat, he said the bandits being led by Kachala Bello Turji appoint and deposed village heads in those areas. The chairman, however, admitted that since the death of Halilu Sububu, the bandit's kingpin that was killed about a month ago, there was a significant reduction in attacks in their communities. According to him, they could now ply some roads which were formerly deserted. In his remarks, the minister said President Tunubu was seriously concerned about insecurity in the north a reason why he appointed Northerners ministers of defense and heads of security operatives. Bandits in their large number riding on motorcycles carrying weapons attacked Diskuru, a remote community under Jirua B ward of Lendume local government area of Katsina State, leaving one person dead. The deceased, one Surajo Lowell, who just returned from Saudi Arabia, after spending about three years there, was shot dead for resisting to be kidnapped. The terrorists attacked Diskuru village around 12 midnight, kidnapped seven people, and rustled unspecified number of animals in the process. According to eyewitnesses, the bandits spent hours in the remote community humiliating people, boggling grain stores and shops where they carted away food items and other valuables worth millions of naira. Police authorities in Katsina are yet to speak on the attack. The troops from Brigade 6, or from 6th Brigade, Nigerian Army and Sector 3 Operation Wealth Struck in Tarawa State, have arrested three suspected bandits and a logistics supplier linked to terrorists within and outside Tarawa State. Acting Assistant Director 6th Brigade Army Public Relations, Captain Olubodunde Oni said the arrest followed a credible intelligence report. He said a special operation was launched on 7th of October 2024 in Andami area of Karim local government area, led to the successful apprehension of the suspected bandits at Jeb Jeb, a border community between Taraba and Plateau State. Captain Oni gave the names of the suspects as Adamu Abubakar. Mohammed Bello and Musa Adamu. He stated further that the suspects were behind a series of criminal activities, including armed robbery, kidnappings, and violent assaults on communities in the area. Primarily, and the preliminary investigations revealed that the suspects have been active in the state for several years. An investigation is in process to apprehend other members of the criminal syndicate. Comments by some individual that they can shoot down the helicopter of the military. I think that's laughable. In fact, I'm about to laugh about that. And I say that because, you know, we're in a democracy and, we're in a prof and we are a professional force. We cannot just based on somebody's comments begin to do certain things and then they will not accuse the military of being undemocratic. The military is not the only security agency, force, or department in the country. There are other security forces who have a role to play constitutionally when it comes to some of these issues. But I tell you that he doesn't have that capability. He is just blabby. But I will allow the security forces that are responsible for handling such cases 
to take up the matter. Ours is come on the battlefield and we take you out. You should come on the battlefield and see whether we can react or not. Now that clip was the defense headquarters on Thursday challenging former militant leader Asari Dokubo to come to the battlefield and witness the capabilities of the military. Dokubo had on October 5th threatened to shoot down um, a military helicopter hovering around his residence, asserting that he could contain the Nigerian military. In response to Dokubo's claim that he could defeat the military, the Director of Defense Media Operations, Major Edward, Major General Edward, Edward Buba, dared him to enter the battlefield to see whether he could indeed contend with the military. Buba further vowed that the ex-militant leader would be neutralized if he followed up on the battlefield and he called upon the relevant security agencies to make sure they address the matter. Now moving on from that, the Anambra State Police Command has announced the rescue of journalists kidnapped in the state. In the statement by its spokesperson, SP Tochuku Ikinga, on Thursday, the command reported that Joint Security Forces successfully rescued six members of a media crew who were abducted while traveling from Lagos to Uyo along the Iseke Olu Road in Ihiala. He also stated that operations are ongoing for the possible rescue of a seventh crew member. Operatives of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, the NSCDC, Jigawa State Command, has arrested a 27-year-old Mika Ilu Abubakar from Kiawa local government area for allegedly raping an 8-year-old girl. The command's public relations officer, Baduruddin Tijani Mahmoud, stated this in Duthi on Thursday. He said the suspect was arrested following a complaint lodged at the NSCDC Divisional Office in Kiawa local government area by the eldest brother of the victim who reported that his eight-year-old sister was raped. He said the suspect denied having carnal knowledge of the girl but confessed to having robbed his manhood on her private part to release sexual tension. Baduruddin said medical examinations conducted on the victim at the Sexual Assault Referral Center in Duse General Hospital revealed multiple penetrations, breakage of hymen, and bruises around the vaginal area. Borno State's government said its attention has been drawn to a recent escape of six repentant insurgents that have surrendered to the Borno State government and processed under the Borno model of reconciliation, peace building and development. Statements by Commissioner, Ministry of Information and Internal Security, Professor Usman Tar said that government is fully aware of the incident and remains committed to collaborating with the relevant agencies to track and arrest the escapees. According to him, these repentant returnees are part of a cohort of over 2,000 militants that were recently documented, processed, profiled, and categorized as low risks in terms of their mental state, vulnerability to violent extremism, propensity for psychotrophic substance abuse and probability of relapse to violence. The commissioner added that these repentant insurgents escaped unarmed and are being tracked down contrary to rumors that the absconders escaped with government arms. The Lagos State High Court sitting in Ikeja has adjourned till November 21st for the arraignment and plea bargain outcome of convicted kidnap kingpin Chukwu Dumeme Onwa Madike, popularly known as Evans. Justice Adenike Koka adjourned proceedings following the absence of Evans and his counsel in court. The prosecution, the Lagos State government, was also absent. Evans and his co-defendant, Joseph Emekam, are facing an amended five-count charge of murder, attempt to murder, conspiracy to commit felony to wit, kidnapping and attempt to murder. 
Now, away from security matters, the president of the Petroleum Product Retail Outlets Association of Nigeria, the Petron, Billy Gillis Harris, um, has urged Dangote Refinery to stop operating in secrecy and reveal the cost of his motor, premium motor spirits, that's the PMS, to Nigerians. Gills Harris urged the management of the refinery to be open and get input from stakeholders. The Patreon boss stated this during an interview on Thursday. He noted that while the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited gave a price template, it did not reveal the input of Dangote Refinery in the pricing. He noted that the refining company is open about its diesel price, but not that of premium motor spirits, also known as petrol. Now, similarly, the Trade Union Congress, the TUC, has demanded the return of the petrol price to what they said was um, as of June 2023. President Festus Osifo at a press briefing in Abuja on Thursday asked the government to specially intervene in the sector by giving foreign exchange to Longwate refinery at 1,000 naira per dollar and not at the current over 1,600 naira per dollar uh, exchange rate to crash petrol prices. Now, since May of 2023, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, the NNPCL, has increased the pump price of petrol from 184 naira in Lagos to 998 naira. The price per litre of petrol was around 450 naira in Lagos as of June 2023. Now, the recent price hike of petrol has triggered nationwide fears of continuous living condition crisis in the country. In this explainer, Abdullahi Ahmed chronicles the continuing rise in the price of petrol since the inception of the Tinubu's administration. Take a look. Before President Bola Ahmed Tinubu took office on May 29, 2023, Nigerians paid 198 naira per litre. But everything changed the moment the president declared subsidy is gone in his inaugural speech at the Eagle Square. That announcement sent shockwaves through the country, immediately pushing fuel prices to 540 naira per litre and above. So, why was the subsidy removed? The president argues it is bleeding the nation dry, fueling corruption and crippling the Nigerian economy. He vowed that the money saved would be reinvested to improve other sectors. In a candid conversation while visiting monarchs, he questioned why Nigeria should, quote, act like Father Christmas to neighboring countries by subsidizing PMS that was often smuggled out of the country. But Nigerians barely had time to catch their breath because on July 18, 2023, the price of petrol again jumped, this time to 617 naira per liter. What's the reason for that? Well, NNPC's Mele Kiari pointed to market forces. In his words, he said, quote, prices will go up and sometimes come down in a fully deregulated market. Now, despite assurances that everything was, quote, under control, the situation worsened. Long fuel queues returned and rumors spread that a new price hike was looming. The NNPC finally admitted they owed international oil traders a whopping $6.8 billion. By September 2024, the reality hit hard. The pump price soared to 897 naira per liter, a staggering 45% increase. President Tinubu defended this as part of his bold reforms, asking, quote, how can we build good roads, provide reliable electricity, and improve our schools if we don't take hard decisions. The final blow came just days later when the price shot up again, this time crossing the 1,000 naira per litre mark. The NMPC, once the middleman in fuel purchases from Rangote Refinery, decided to step aside, allowing marketers to buy directly from the Rangote Refinery. With no subsidies, prices skyrocketed under a new willing buyer, willing seller system. Now, this dramatic shift leaves many Nigerians grappling with tough economic realities 
as fuel prices surge in the push towards a fully deregulated market. Now away from that, the ruling People's Democratic Party, the PDP in Plateau State, has won 10 chairmanship seats out of the 17 local government areas in the state, as declared by the Plateau State Independent Electoral Commission, PLASIEC. At the commission's headquarters in Jos, Plateau State Independent Electoral Commission Chairman Plankji Daniel Chishak announced that the PDP candidates won 10 out of 17 local government chairmanship positions. He said the winning local government areas are Mikang, Shendam, Basa, Riam, Jos South, Jos East, Kanam, Kwapan, Langtang South, as well as Barkeladi. Result from Jos North. Pangshin, Kanke, Bokos, Wase, Mongu, and Langtan North are still pending. The chairman explained that as soon as the remaining results arrive, they will be announced. Now, former governor of River State and the chairman of River State Elders and Leadership Forum, Rufus Adad Judge, has called on the people of the state to remain peaceful despite the political provocation emanating from the just concluded local government council um, elections in the state. Rufus Adad Judge said this in a press briefing with journalists in Patakot after an emergency meeting of the forum. The report. He called on the Nigerian Police River State Command to implement the directive of the president, calling for a proper investigation over the crisis that led to the burning of some council secretariats in the state. We thank President Bula Ahmed Tinibu, GCFR, in seeing for peace and asking aggrieved parties and individuals who feel dissatisfied with the outcome of the election to use the cause for amicably resolutions of their grievances. We urge the Nigerian pol police force to immediately implement the president's directives of providing security in the local government forces offices and carrying out their constitutional responsibilities. The chairman of the forum thanked President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in suing for peace and asking the group parties and individuals who feel dissatisfied with the outcome of the elections to use the courts for amicable resolution of their grievances. He also commended Governor Sinalai Fubara for remaining resolute in the face of the political crisis in the state. The former Deputy Governor Gabriel Toby, however, appealed to the security operatives to remain professional in the investigation over the crisis in the state. The people have spoken. Therefore, all claimants and owners of political structures should remain silent and listen attentively to the voices and yearnings of the true structure owners, the river shepherds who now have spoken and decided to restructure their structures, resource to arson and violence. Play a very vital role, and they remain Nigerian police, and they are institutional, they are constitutionally put there, and they have a role. If you have some one or two misgivings, or some wrong steps, one or two, that cannot call them the whole thing. Police, 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 police. The Elders Forum congratulated the Justice Adolfos in Nibeli's led River State Independent Electoral Commission, Alciek, for being resolute and firm in the face of intimidation, threats, and distraction. The Court of Appeal in Abuja has affirmed the judgment of the Federal High Court, which set aside the 800 billion naira budget passed by five members of the River State House of Assembly, which was led by Edison Ehi. The appellate court on Thursday dismissed the appeal filed by the governor of River State, Simnalai Fubara, on grounds that it lacked merit. The court held that Governor Fubara withdrew his counter affidavit at the lower court in the matter and as such cannot commence an appeal in a matter he did not challenge at the trial stage. 
In a unanimous judgment, the court said that Governor Fubara is expected to apply the rule of law and not the rule of might. The court further says the situation in River State House of Assembly is an executive dictatorship by the governor and a joke taken too far. Now, the Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, has asked the National Working Committee of the party to urgently convene a National Executive Committee meeting, the NEC, on to address the crisis within the party. The chairman of the PDP Board of Trustees, Senator Adolphus Wabara, made the recommendation at a meeting of the BOT, that's the board, in Abuja on Thursday. Wabara also urged all that are invited by the party's disciplinary committee to freely present themselves to the committee, stressing the supremacy of the party over any member. According to him, the Board of Trustees held a significant meeting with the Governor of River State, Simnalai Fubara, in August, where issues around the political situation in the state and its effects on the party was discussed. The PDP has been battling internal crisis, which has split its members along lines regarding the tenure of the acting national chairman, Omar Damagun, and issues of disciplining of erring members. Nigerians are lamenting the burden of bank charges being placed on them by their financial institutions. According to Trust TV reporter Chairman Dabeng, Nigerians are of the opinion that several of these charges are unnecessary. The report. Following complaints by several bank customers in Abuja over excessive bank charges, Nigerians are being advised to file the complaints to the Central Bank of Nigeria. Bank customers are, however, calling on the relevant bodies to step in and provide proper regulations and help curb the issues and force the banks to be specific about what the charges are for. It's actually frustrating because seeing people just deducting money and you don't have a choice to like complain that this is actually not right. Sometimes you just make some transaction and before you know, 600, 500 is out of your account. Like the way they debit you is too much. I don't even know what they are debiting me for. One minute they are debiting you for electronic charges, another minute they are debiting you for ATM charges. Like, it's extremely too much and frustrating. I would like it to be scrapped. I would like it to be scrapped totally. Banks shouldn't be charging me for what I don't understand. They are charging me for sending me a text. Why not just send me an email? And I think that's free. So send me an email and, and although they do send an email, so why is it sending me a text and then charging me for sending me a text? Um, this the moment just finished and I, when I, I saw a, a, a maintenance of um, um, 700 naira on just text messages. And I'm like, if you calculate 400, 400, 400 naira per SMS, so how many SMS did you send to me in a month that you're charging me 700 naira? It doesn't make sense to me. Head of the Complaint Management Division at the CBN's Consumer Protection Department, Mohamed Mwazu, who had earlier reacted to the complaints, suggested that consumers read the CBN's handbook on bank charges to determine the appropriate amount to pay for each given transaction. However, financial analyst Aliu Ilia is of the opinion that the banking system's biggest problem are the telcos. I think the challenge of uh, arbitrary increments in the bank charges is becoming something unbearable for our people. But I think the major thing is the telcos because you recall that everything that goes on through bank is through the telcos. So let me give you a good example. I recall of recent we complained directly to a particular bank that these charges, why is it this high? You know what they said? They said it is not them who immediately will pass through this, their USSD. That is, we are being charged by the telecoms. Please, you can use other platform uh, that will not be charging you, such as maybe their app. So even the bank itself is discouraging people from that. So I think there's no good relationship between two, uh, the banks and the telecoms. Perhaps it's in the long run too. The telecoms are now function more, even as bank. That's a serious. So I think the regulatory, regul the regulatory body need to do more. To make sure that we pay less because if you look at the charges about seven eight uh, charges arbitrarily alio ilia is encouraging nigerians to know their rights and where they notice discrepancies in their bank statements should not hesitate to seek for clarifications chamun dabeng trust tv news abuja zenith bank branches nationwide has been filed to the brim with angry customers as they demanded their money claiming the bank has been experiencing issues for weeks 
Recently, Zenith Bank has faced significant service disruptions, leading to widespread frustration among its customers. Reports indicate that branches nationwide were filled with angry customers demanding access to their funds, as many were unable to perform transactions for over 48 hours due to a major IT upgrade that went awry. This disruption particularly affected customers trying to access their money for urgent needs, such as medical bills. In response to the unrest, Zenith Bank has acknowledged the issues, apologizing for the inconvenience and assuring customers that services are now being restored. However, the situation has raised concerns about the bank's reliability, especially given the critical timing of salary payments coinciding with the outage. At them, they refuse to let us enter. Your... Yes, I will make the big deal. Yes, you lock us outside. Am I not your customer? I, am I coming here to spend your money? Oh God, you lock us outside, you block people outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you people come and beg us to open a car, yeah, yeah, yeah. and push that car, and spend all on your stupid fucking network. Okay. Your useless network, you people are here. Your useless network, I will make the video. You lock, you lock us outside. You lock us outside. Oh. Eh? Am I coming here to spend your money? Oh am I coming here to spend yeah. your money? Ah! What kind of nonsense character is that? Look at them, look at them, look at them. Okay, this is low. Let me get my video. Look at you, boo. Look, look at you. Now moving on to legislative matters, the Nigerian Senate has formally approved Professor Abdullahi Usman as the chairman of the National Hajj Commission. The confirmation of his nomination was after due consideration and adoption of a report by the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs. Here's the report. During Thursday's sitting, Senator Bedlo, chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, had presented a report following the screening conducted by his committee. The report concluded that Professor Usman merited the appointment. The committee, having carefully and thoroughly screened the nominee and it is satisfied with his qualifications, exposure, conduct, character, experiences and general performances. The nominee has displayed wide and in-depth knowledge of Hajj activities and operations. Therefore, the committee recommends as follows that the Senate do confirm the nomination of Professor Abdullahi Sali Usman for appointment as chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria. We so move. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the nomination of Professor Abdullahi Sali for appointment as chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye, and those against say nay. The aye is of it. The nomination of Professor Abdullahi Saleh is hereby confirmed as chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria. Meanwhile, the Senate has also called on the federal government to withhold allocations from local government councils where officials were selected in a manner similar to appointing caretaker committees as reportedly seen in the recent local government elections. The resolution came after a motion was introduced by Senate Minority Leader Senator Abba Moro who condemned the elections as fraudulent and a violation of the Constitution. Other lawmakers emphasized the importance of reviewing the Constitution, highlighting the need to address the irregularities in the conduct of the election. The Senate further notes that in most places, elections took place in the private homes of the chieftains of the ruling party, making the entire process a mere coronation of candidates of the ruling party, and not a proper election is contemplated under the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. Mr. President, we should change what is going on now. It cannot continue. As long as I want, we want Democrats to prevail in our local councils, our local government areas, these anomaly, these attack on democracy must stop henceforth. Mr. President, our own responsibility and the governors, the president, and every one of us. This is about the survival of democracy. Even if it is going to be incremental amendment to improve local government elections, 
Mr. President, this 10th National Assembly must initiate that. If we can't get everything out, then we must have some steps that will narrow down the avenues through which the state independent electoral commissions manipulate the system in almost all the states. It's need for us to do something to reposition the local government as a third tier of government. And what you are seeing here is that it has never really been a third tier of government. So we commend the Supreme Court of Nigeria for the ruling that reforms of local government should go direct to the local governments. But then we, on our part, in the National Assembly, must give Philip, we must take the next step to ensure that the decision that has been so far given by the Supreme Court becomes alive. The lawmakers feel that these reforms are necessary to ensure it fulfills its role in the grassroots governance. From the National Assembly, Sagi Ibrahim for Trust TV News. The House of Representatives has called on the federal government, the state governments and education stakeholders to urgently address the challenges facing teachers in Nigeria. The report. This follows a motion by Ibrahim Isiaka who highlighted issues such as low salaries, lack of support, overwork, insufficient resources and mental health strain on teachers. He urged the House to increase funding for teacher salaries and resources, implement professional development programs, and foster a supportive environment for educators. The House knows the World Teachers Day declared by UNESCO in 1994. And just uh, the last October 5th, um, we missed it, the October 5th annually to recognize the vital role of teachers in shaping society's key contributions in educating present and future generations, foster critical thinking and creativity, promote social justice and equity, impact on students on influence, educational outcomes, mentor, guide, and personal development. The House also urged the Federal Road Safety Commission, FRSC, to adopt technology-assisted enforcement systems such as automatic vehicle location systems, automated traffic enforcement, ATE, and advanced data analytics to improve road safety. This motion was moved by Gerba Mohammed, who emphasized the need to assess the effectiveness of these methods in reducing traffic violations. The Federal Road Safety Commission to evaluate the effectiveness of enforcement strategies, whether technology-assisted methods are reducing traffic violations and improving safety, and mandate the committee on the Federal Road Safety Commission to ensure compliance. Additionally, the House called on the Federal Ministry of Water Resources and Sanitation to reassess and reconstruct the Alau Dam to prevent future floods. Abdul Kadir Rahiz, who moved the motion, expressed concern that despite multiple budget allocations, the dam remains in poor condition, leading to recurrent collapses and flooding. He urged the ministry to include the dam's reconstruction in its 2025 budget. The House aware that on 13 September 1994, the Alo Dam collapsed, causing flood in Maiduguri and its imbalance that destroyed properties, public amenities, and farmlands, causing the displacement of about half a million residents. The House concerned that almost exactly 30 years later, on 10th of September 2024, Maiduguri is again flooded by the worst flood in history affecting over 60% of the city, destroying lives, properties, and critical city infrastructures like roads, bridges, hospitals, schools, markets, and other public utilities. The House will convene on Tuesday next week for further deliberations. Artisans in the construction industry and building materials dealers who are feeling the heat of the current economic hardship are crying out, citing a severe lack of patronage due to the halt in most building projects. Now, Trust TV's Abdelaziz Ibrahim, who visits markets and artisans' hangout in Kano, reports. As a thriving metropolis with constant urban development, Kano now faces a significant slowdown in construction projects. Artisans who depend on projects like these for their livelihood say they can no longer meet their financial obligations. When things get worst, a call of wire, 50 something thousand, people cannot be able to afford to build. 
So I stay for good one month, two months, three months without doing a, a job. I put now five hundred and like we don't manage. Before now, how much of price? Now be five hundred. But now quarter, now be one thousand plus. And you, you must use one mood for a house. How are you going to do? It's not only artisans that are feeling the pinch. Sellers of building materials are also facing hard times. They share their plight. I'm doing in this business almost 20 something years now. But the problem that they are facing inside now is our goods is very cost. Since when our government, this new government enter, we are suffering because things are very cost. Things are very difficult. Even sometimes we come from money tonight, we don't sell anything. The situation, this price of dollar is affecting the goods. Honestly, because at times, you will sell some goods. When you go to buy, you have to add another money to buy. And it affects everything generally. If you go to some building sites, many people have suspended their projects. The people are saying that it's dollar. I don't think it's just dollar. Because dollar just multiplied by, by, by two. But the way things are in the market, some went to three times, four times. That's how it is. That's how bad it is. So that is, that is, that is the reason why things are not, uh, constructions are not going on the way it's supposed to be. Deep now the time where, where maybe the time where things are cheap, you understand? But if somebody come and tell them the price, they buy quick and go. But now everything costs. I don't know that this, this country don't tire everybody. You know, I don't know what to say. But the only thing I know, you leave everything to God. An economist speaks on the broader economic implications of this downturn in the construction industry. Presently, we are witnessing a closure, stoppage, virtually in every part of our country. And the implication, number one, there is going to be high number of unemployment. Because when you look at the building uh, industry, it is a sector where huge sources of employment are created. And you remember when there is unemployment, the second is going to be poverty, and the poverty unemployment is translating into uh, the issue of insecurity, prevalence of insecurity in, uh, in a country. As the economic situation worsens, the cries of these artisans grow louder. Without intervention or relief, many fear that the construction industry which once provided steady income for millions could face even greater collapse abdulaziz ibrahim trust tv news national association of nigerian nurses and midwives kaduna chapter and other health workers in kaduna state have embarked on an indefinite strike over non-implementation of their 30 percent balance of the 2009 consolidated health salary structure can hence afford their workers in the state. Addressing newsmen in Kaduna, leaders of the association Kaduna State Council says the Kaduna State health workers need motivation because they are the least paid in the country but are also willing to return to work as soon as their demands are met. The report. Public hospitals across Kaduna State have been paralyzed as a result of the indefinite strike embarked upon by the unions. According to them, they will not suspend the industrial action until their demands are met. The demands cut across the balance of 30% contests of 2009. Then the, this issue of 2021 hazard allowance. Then we also have issues of some of our colleagues that were employed in April 2023 and we are not paid until February 2024. So they have eight months arrears that has not been paid. And up to now, they have not been paid. Imagine somebody going to work for eight months and that person is not paid. He's transporting himself, he rented a house, he's feeding himself and going to work and nobody uh, cares. A balance of 30% coin has 2009. Uh, then uh, 2021, full implementation of 2021 hazard allowance. Also, uh, promotions uh, which have been outstanding. Uh, you realize someone is due for promotion since uh, uh, three years back, and uh, he will be due for another promotion, and still, yet he has not collected the previous promotion. And when he gets the promotion, it says without arrears. He has worked for it. 
we were asking for a salary of uh, of twenty two thousand nine. So two thousand nine, where we had some people are enjoying twenty twenty three, and they are already talking about twenty twenty four, and we are still talking about two thousand nine. Two thousand nine is not even hundred percent. You are asking for or for a balance of thirty percent of the two thousand nine. That is what we're asking for. And I don't think we're asking for too much. The strike left many patients at the public hospital stranded. Meanwhile, the situation compelled others to seek for medical care at the private hospital amidst economic hardship. I had to go for a scan. Then I came back here, but there are no nurses. Then I went back home and I came back today, but yet there are no nurses. I'm not happy, but I did come here to the, do something. When I did see the place is don't look me, I don't have you guys here. It's true. So I don't know what happened to this hospital. But somebody they say now they go do uh, strike. strike. So I don't have you. I did come from far placed. In case in my life. I brought my two daughters to the hospital, but we did not receive medical attention. We are appealing to the governor to come to our aid. Effort by Trust TV reporter to speak to Kaduna State Ministry of Health was unsuccessful. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. In a concerted effort to provide relief to victims of recent floods in Jigawa State, Governor Omar Namedi, along with top federal government officials, have distributed food palliatives to affected residents in Sule Tankarakar local government area. The initiative was part of a larger effort to support those hit hardest by the natural disaster. The report. The relief package funded by the federal government included a 25 kg bag of rice, while the Jigar state government supplemented the aid with 10 kg of millet, 10 kg of maize, a half carton of spaghetti, and 5,000 naira in cash. A total of 17,450 beneficiaries across the state received these supplies. Ibrahim Kabiru Masari reassured the victims of President Tinubu's continued support, underscoring the administration's commitment to addressing the needs of flood-affected communities and other vulnerable groups. Ministers Kayari and Bagudu in their remarks praised the resilience of Jigar's citizens and their continued support for the APC-led governments at both state and federal levels. They described the current economic challenges as temporary and necessary steps toward long-term national progress. It is in the tone of this uh, appreciation of government, of the government, and good people of Jigawa State, that he directed us to appreciate you in all and assembly, and it at the same time, present to you a total sum of uh, 17,418 bags of rice to assist in cautioning the harsh affected of some of our economic policies. Mr. President, who does not want any Nigerian citizen to go to bed hungry, and in his wisdom, deemed it important to initiate this food intervention. We are all aware of the chronology of events which has plumbed the entire globe into food insecurity in recent past, such as the aftermath of the COVID-19, the Russian-Ukraine war, climate change, and other localized factors which has distorted food prices globally, of which Nigeria is not an exception. Mr. President Suo, since he was elected, that he's going to be a president for all Nigerians. He knows no tribe, he knows no region. And as his Minister of Budget and Planning, I have the prayer opportunity of seeing how the sources are allocated in the country. Under his every leadership, I can testify that the resources are equitably spread around the country in order to support all parts of Nigeria. Governor Namadi expressed gratitude to President Tinubu for his proactive stance on economic and food security issues and reiterated his administration's commitment to improving the well-being of Jigar residents, especially amid rising living costs. Today's occasion, 
with the commencement of distribution of yet another political support in form of food commodities to the most needy household and the other deserving vulnerable segment of population in Jiga said from His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Hamatunu. Specifically, it will involve the distribution of 17,420.25 kilograms, 25 kilograms of boiled rice supplied by the federal government under the presidential food assistance program for vulnerable populations. This distribution forms part of the broader presidential food initiative, which aims to mitigate the impact of inflation and enhance the living conditions of Nigerians particularly those in crisis-affected areas like Jiga State. It is now time for Business News Update with Yusuf Akogu. Take a look. Time for some business stories. The net foreign exchange inflows to Nigeria's economy has risen by 67.8% to $27.6 billion in the first half of 2024 from $16.44 billion in the corresponding period of 2023. This development was driven by a 4.6% year-on-year increase in net forex inflow through autonomous sources and 170% year-on-year increase in the net forex inflow through the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. Data from the CBN quarterly economic statistics for the review period showed that forex inflows to the economy rose year-on-year by 41.6% to $47.73 billion in the first quarter of 2024. The data also showed that the inflows through CBN rose by 31.7% year-on-year to $16.6 billion from $12.6 billion. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wali Edu, has stressed the need for the stronger collaboration between fiscal and monetary authorities principally the Central Bank of Nigeria, to significantly reduce the current rate of inflation. According to his Director of Information and Public Relations, Mohamed Manga, the minister spoke at a two-day Renew Hope Agenda workshop in Abuja on Wednesday. The minister highlighted Nigeria's current fiscal challenges while proposing innovative reforms to stimulate economic growth. He emphasized the importance of aligning fiscal and monetary policies to curb inflation, attract investment, and foster sustainable economic development. NGS closed Thursday trading in red as most investors await Q3 report of companies before taking decisions. Let's see how it went down. Darkcom, Nigerian PLC, lead the losers today down 10% to close at 63 copper per share. The livestock feed also down 9.88%. It closed at 3 naira and 10 copper per share. The feed seemed down as well 9.71% to close at 13 naira and 95 copper per share. Of course, this has dragged down the market down by 0.01%. Marginally, though, you will say volume of trade 277.75 million shares. Value at 4.65 billion naira in a list of 7,091 did exchanges among investors this Thursday. Looking at the top trading equities by volume, Fidelity Bank Nigeria PLC leader table 43.34 million shares trader, UBA 30.68 million shares, of course, Zenith Bank 25.55 million volume of shares it traded at the close of business this Thursday. Some equities recorded gains, leading the gainers is Regalis. Regalis gained 10% to close at 66 couple per share. The cavity helicopter from the aviation sector gained 9.73 percent to close at 2 naira and 48 copper per share of course royal Alex also gained 8.70 percent to close at 75 copper per share there and that was the highlight of stock trading as it went down this thursday on the floor of ngs let's see the global stock market and exchange rate data for today <music> Prices rise more than 1% on Thursday, underpinned by a spike in fuel demand as a major storm barrel into Florida, with Middle East supply risk also in focus. And the London market, Brent Cole sells for $77 per barrel. For the paper basket, dealers offer $78 per barrel. 
and that's business. I am Yusuf Akogun. Thank you, Yusuf, for the updates. And now on the international scene, the death toll in a brutal gang attack last week on a small town in central Haiti has risen to at least 115. A local official said on Wednesday that the attack on residents of Pont Sonde on October 3rd was one of the biggest massacres that Haiti has seen in recent history. Miriam Fever, fake mayor of the St. Mark, said on Wednesday that the toll has risen to 115 and would likely keep rising as authorities continue to look for bodies and haven't been able to access certain areas of the town. Also, the UN had previously said that at least 70 people were killed last week. And when the Grand, the Grand Grief Gang invaded the town of Pont Sode in the central Atibonite region, the victims included babies, young mothers and the elderly, with the gang approaching Pont Sode via canoes to catch residents by surprise. <laughs> I was hiding with my son behind a vehicle and two men appeared and walked towards me. One of them said, don't shoot her, but when I ran, the other one shot me in the back. We are updating the number of dead every day. So far, we have recovered 115 bodies. Yesterday, they told us they found four more bodies that we have not yet been able to identify. We are looking to identify them so we can add them to the list we have. Let's now join Adeni Adjishafe for Sports News Update. The Nigerian Football Federation has rejected claims of poor treatment on arrival in Nigeria by the captain of the Libyan senior men national team, Faisal al Badri. NFF insists the Libyan Football Federation created kills for his own team, the Mediterranean Night. NFF Assistant Director of Protocol Emmanuel Ayonbumi said the Libyan Federation informed the NFF that his team was landing in Port Harcourt and not Uyo. Three hours to the team's arrival on Tuesday, Ayonbumi said Libya delegation jettisoned road transportation arrangements by the NFF and instead hire bosses on their own. And still on Afghan, the Honorable Minister of Sport Development, Senator John Owa Eno, has charged the Super Eagles of Nigeria to conquer as they take on Libya's Mediterranean night at the Gosu Akpabio Stadium on Friday as the match marks a key moment in Group D. Acknowledging the ranking of Eagles in Group D, Senator John Owa Eno reminded the team to show tactical superiority and prove their mettle on the field of play, leaving nothing to chance. Nigerian leads the group after two matches having secured four points, while Libya is at the bottom with just a point. The Eagles opened their campaign with a commanding 3 0 victory over Benin Republic and followed up with a goalless draw against Rwanda. Super Eagles also hold a historical advantage, having won all previous encounters against Libya. And lastly, the National Body of Sport Rights Association of Nigeria, SWAN, issued a statement on some sports journalists earlier kidnapped on their way to cover the first leg of 2025 African Cup of Nations qualifier between Super Eagles and Mediterranean Knights of Libya in New York. President of Sports Rights Association of Nigeria, SWAN, Isaiah Benjamin, said the SWAN National Secretariat made necessary contact immediately the sports journalists were abducted around Anambra Emo Axis and have been reliably informed of their release following pressure by the proactive Nigerian security operatives on the kidnappers. SWAN therefore commends security operatives, particularly the Nigerian Army and police, for their prompt action, which ensured that up to six of the held sports journalists regained their freedom with efforts to get the remaining person freed. Swan urged members to remain calm and without fear in the discharge of their professional duties while maintaining regular communication with various Swan State chapters. That's Sport News. I'm Adeni Aji Shafe. And with that, we have come to the end of Trust TV News R. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms and join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching. Good evening.